Right, another day in the Premier League, another game week has just passed. And, um, well, some of the games last night are crazy. But I'm just only going to be talking about three teams here. Manchester City, Liverpool and Arsenal. First of all, first game week, sorry, the first match of the game week. Arsenal, Newcastle against Arsenal. Newcastle won Arsenal nil. Um, Isaac's goal was wonderful, but Anthony Gordon's cross was even fantastic. Um... I watched the goal live and after that I stopped watching the game because I was going to have my dinner. But when I was looking at that game, at least for the first couple of minutes, Arsenal were really, really struggling. And look at the statistics now. Look at the past Premier League matches that Arsenal have been having. They are winless in three. They've picked one point in the past three games. So one out of nine points. That is a problem for Arsenal moving forward. Your next three matches in the Premier League Chelsea, which I don't think is easy considering how Chelsea are doing really well this season. Nottingham Forest, they are third in the Premier League as we speak now. The only team to probably pip them is Villa and probably Chelsea if both of them win their games, right? So Nor uh, not Norris and uh, Nottingham Forest could finish as low as fifth uh, by the end of this game week. But still, a fantastic season thus far from Nottingham Forest. We've got Chris Wood being in the next Haaland or something like that. So this is something that Arsenal needs to be worried about. Usually, I don't think we should be worried about Nottingham Forest, but they've beaten Liverpool this year at the start of the season. And now they could be Arsenal. So this is very interesting. And of course, after that, we've got West Ham with Nottingham Forest just smash 3-0 last night. So how are Arsenal going to come into the next three matches, really? And I think if they really play OK and they do stand a good chance, it should be nine points in the bag. A hard-earned nine points. But whether or not they're going to get those nine points remains to be seen. First, terrible game against Newcastle, for sure. Um, a lot of possession, but only one shot on target in the entire game. Um, I felt that I, watched, I was watching the highlights, uh, ex extend ones, in fact. And I think Arsenal had some really good chances. Obviously, Nick Pope. Nick Pope? It's Newcastle's goalkeeper, Nick Pope. Hold up. Yes, Nick Pope. <laughs> My knowledge just slipped out of me there. Yeah, but yeah, so Nick Pope with some decent saves. The defence of Newcastle, really tight. Getting the players in, really congested. Not giving Arsenal room. But Declan Rice had a couple of chances to score. And I felt that with the sort of calibre that even though Declan Rice ain't a striker, had a couple of good headers that he missed. Some shots which I felt like at least could have dropped the goalkeeper, but he went wide. Um, yeah, it's just poor from Arsenal. I think the injury of Erdegaard has really, really honestly hurt them. Um, the lack of creativity that I'm seeing from Arsenal, this is something that I think Arteta needs to look at it again because injuries, uh, if you look at Man City, has really affected them already. But if you're just looking at Arsenal, right, they need to sort something out in the, in the team. With the absence of Erdegaard, they need to do something about it. They've only managed to beat Shakhtar Donetsk by a goal, a, a goal to nil thanks to an own goal. The past four games for Arsenal hasn't been great. I mean, they've beaten Preston in the in the EFL Cup, but that's besides the point, really. That game should be winnable. If if Preston managed to somehow provide an upset in that game, Arsenal are in really big trouble here. Well, do I think they're going to bounce back worse for Eric Ten Hag? I think yes. There's just a bit of a stint that Arsenal are having here, but I think it's a bit too much now. They're currently seven points behind Liverpool and we're just 10 games in. Of course, Liverpool last season have shown that they can slip too, but slipping, you've got to, it's really dependent on the team above you to slip, but you have to be inch perfect right now, Arsenal. They've got to pretty much smash our opposition, be better than City and Liverpool's results combined to even stand a chance of winning the title. Early on the season, I mean, City have faced this before, right? Early on in the season, they were a couple of points behind their closest rivals. And arguably, you can say that maybe City are out of the title race. But City always never give up. Arsenal can obviously implement the same kind of attitude. But whether or not it's going to happen is another thing altogether. Do I think Arsenal still have the ability to fight for the title? Yes, 100%. Right, Arsenal are not slums. They're very, very good. Arsenal, I think they sent a really good opportunity. What they need to do now is reconsolidate what they have in the team. Realise, acknowledge the absence of Erdegaard, try to do something about it, get the players on board, get things running again. They should. They need to stop. They need to stop this little slump that they're having here. They need to push on from here on out and really give it the maximum in the rest of the games. 
I think maybe eventually at some point you've got to learn to prioritise really what's more important to them. Is it the Premier League? Is it the Champions League? Is it the EFL Cup? Or is it the FA Cup? At some point you've got to make that little bit of a decision. What City have done obviously is forego the Carabao Cup, the EFL Cup, because of the injuries that, that the club's having. And it, to me at least completely makes sense. We've won the EFL Cup like four times in a row. Screw that Cup, I guess. Um, and just now try to focus on other things that are more important. The squad depth is very thin. But yes, I think that's it for Arsenal, really. I think this is just like a wobble that I think many people didn't expect, but it can happen to any team. And I think what Arsenal need to do now is really recuperate, get together as a team, solve the problem at hand. I think it should be okay. Um, they need to, as I say, make do without Erdegaard. And when Erdegaard comes back, hopefully things are going to go back to speed for them for sure. But now, from now till his return... Something still needs to be done in Arsenal. And now moving on to Man City. Um, I watched the game last night. Um, and I said this a lot throughout the course of the game. That Bournemouth were playing like Man City. Man City were playing like Bournemouth. I felt like I was watching a switch of roles essentially. Bournemouth went fantastic that game. And they beat Arsenal two goals to the good. Bournemouth came in three at some point as well. I just didn't know what to say, really, when, when I saw the performance. First half performance was shambolic. Second half performance was a lot better. First things first, right? The goal from Semenyo, really good. The goal for Evan Nielsen, really good as well. The goal from Gavardio, pretty solid as well. Really good header, good whip in from Gundogan. But one problem about City, right, is the lack of dynamic wingers. 13 players left after the game against Tottenham. Some players got back from injury. Doku was back, Savini was on the bench, uh, De Bruyne was on the bench as well. I'm not exactly too sure if they're just on the bench, just for the sake of fitting the numbers up, or if they were really fit. I don't think Savini came on, I know Doku did. When Doku came on, the, the, the complex of the game, the com it's just changed on its turn on its head. Doku was fantastic throughout when he came on, really using the wings to the advantage, really knocking on the door, against Bournemouth, using his agile feet and everything whatsoever to throw at Bournemouth, suddenly the team started to come alive. But well, it's a little bit too late, wasn't it? And as I said, Bournemouth could have been up by three at some point. I think it was Cliver that took the shot. Really good curl, hit the post. I think Smith won the follow-up. I might be wrong with the name, but yeah, he missed. After that, I think he hit the crossbar after that as well, or he may have missed it. I can't fully remember, but... Should have been 3 0 up to Bournemouth, and that would have been awful for City. Bournemouth just absolutely dominates the game. I think this has been a while since I felt this dominated by an opposition, and I definitely didn't expect Bournemouth to be this team. They pressed really well every time City had the ball, they didn't give City the amount of room that City would have craved always. City didn't really have the time to make good decisions, and it was always very hasty at the end of the day. It was not good at all. When Bournemouth went one year up, I was just like, that's it. It's very difficult. But back of my head, I still felt that maybe City stood a chance of winning game 3-1, maybe 3-2. But when second half, the second goal went in, I was like, not going to happen already. Um, it's very difficult. They could try. But the number of last minute gas equalizers, winners that we've been having throughout the course of the season so far, the luck's eventually going to run out, and it obviously did run, it did run out uh, in the game. Haaland should have scored that very last-minute one. Foden, with a last-minute effort, went wide. Problems, left, right, and centre. Problems with the injuries, problems with the players, problems with the tactics. Things need to change again. It's very shaky. City have been winning games, of course, yes, but they are rather shaky. The win against Wolves, I felt was shaky. The win against Southampton, I felt was shaky. The win against Fulham, I felt was shaky. It's we're having three to four games in a row, Premier League games in a row now, where the club is very shaky, not performing up to the standard that I think a lot of people would be expecting them to. So because of that, something needs to change, for sure, 100%. Signings could probably come in, Musiala, Verts, it doesn't really matter. I think now we've got to make do without signings at least. And focus more on the squad that you have. And I think when January comes along, then only consider making signs. But I feel it's a squad that that's missing. When Mares wasn't in, Laporte wasn't in, you could feel the thinness in the squad depth. 
And the only forward that the club has right now is bro, uh, early Bro Haaland. If Haaland's injured at some point, there's no out striker really to replace him. No Alvarez. Oscar Bob is still injured and he's not a striker. He's more of a winger to me. Who is going to play? Is going to take over that striker role? No one. At this point in time, they've got to reconsider. And problem is as well, Phil Foden. Not at his best this season. Him and Cole Palmer, complete contrast. And speaking of Cole Palmer, Hatsy kept Cole Palmer. He could have been a very good backup. I would have never thought Cole Palmer was this good. I felt when City saw Cole Palmer, the only thing that went in my head was we've lost a good backup. That's it. I never thought of Cole Palmer being as good as he is right now. Because Pep didn't necessarily give him that many chances and that was why he left. But I mean, it's a good sale ultimately. I think 30 to 40 million pounds for Cole Palmer is a great deal. But this is the problem, isn't it? The problem is showing itself. The defense is very, very leaky. We're conceding goals too early. We've seen too many goals. A clean sheet in the past eight Premier League games. We have already conceded double digit goals in the Premier League. This is very unlike the Man City that I'm used to seeing. And I have my concerns. Whether or not they're going to bounce back, again, words of Eric Ten Hag, I'm not sure. But this is a problem. City, Arsenal, they need to sort themselves out ASAP. Otherwise, Liverpool is actually going to run away with this. And would I have expected Liverpool to win the league this year? Honestly, no. And I would still hope no. Um, because I just felt that, you know, seeing Arsenal, I felt, at least I thought they were going to carry on a certain amount of momentum into the season. Do I think Liverpool have what it means to fight at the very start of the season? Yes, 100%. Arne Schlott has done an exceptional job with Liverpool, only losing the game to Nottingham Forest. And that shows how not good Nottingham Forest have been. But then if I'm going to look at Liverpool's lens, Liverpool have been great this season, very impeccable most times throughout. The draw against Arsenal, fair enough, a little bit of a, you know, up and down there. But otherwise, perfect. When they were one down against Brighton, that was it. They kept knocking on Brighton's door. Chances, chance after chance after chance after chance. Gakpo's goal, um, I mean, the cross that didn't happen ended up becoming goal, fair enough. But Salah's goal, when I saw Salah's goal that curled into the top corner, that was the moment when I realised that that's exactly what City have been missing. No winger. No good winger that can cut in on the inside, try to take the shot, try to bend it, try to trouble the keeper. The entire attack has been very straight for City. It's been just like that, the way that they're channeling it. It's not much of, let me try to get the ball in. Let me try to curl him with, with, with a winger. Let me use my wingers to effect. That's not what Pep's doing. Pep is all about the centre, attacking through the, cent the central way, if, that, if that's what you want to say it. And I think that's the problem now. There's no creativity. The dynamic is not working out in, in the club at City. Something needs to change. We are winning games. We are scoring a lot of goals. Sure, don't get me wrong. But this is when like things go, the, go our way. But when things don't go our way, not really finding an answer to the problem. And it's not like nothing is changing. Essentially, throughout the course of the game, I felt like nothing much has changed. And then I also questioned why didn't Pep consider to bring Doku on earlier or use Doku as a starter? Let Doku have minutes as a starter. He hasn't started many games. Of course, Doku is a great, uh, he's a great super sub, 100%. He's like a Durant, but doesn't score goals. But I still feel that you need to give Doku the chance to at least have a really good 60 to 70 minutes because you need to try your best to maximise that because of the how thin the squad is. You need to maximise in 70 minutes at least, get the, be get the best out of the players, get the most out of your players, get them to charge, get them to score a couple of goals and sit back in the last 20 minutes, try to defend as much. I feel like that's a tactic Pep probably has to consider. It's a risk, but ultimately, you can't go into the game with zero risk. You already don't have the players at your disposal. Something needs to change at that club, ASAP as well. If not, this is going to be a problem. When City face Brighton soon, going to face Tottenham and then Liverpool, these three games are so difficult. And honestly, by looking at how things are going, seven points sounds difficult to even achieve out of nine. There is a problem. And if Pep doesn't find a way to do something about it, I'm not exactly too sure what's going to happen to City. Liverpool might actually run away with the league. I'm not too sure about that. But based on what I'm seeing from Liverpool's performance, they're doing exceptionally well. They've got Aston Villa. They've got Southampton after that. And City. Next three matches. I think Villa will 
be a good test, but I think they would be able to override that challenge. Southampton, I mean, Liverpool's track record with promoted clubs haven't been great, especially in the club era. Um, maybe you could bet on the fact that Liverpool might drop points against Southampton, but against City, I'm not going to go into that game with any amount of confidence for, as a City fan. I think that's a problem. But yeah, I mean, Liverpool, fantastic. Nothing much I can really say about them. Arne Schlott has been doing an exceptional job. I thought it was going to have a bit of a bump, to be honest, but based on what I'm seeing now, at least in the early, early phase of the season, fantastic. 8 out of 10 wins. 8 wins in your ten in your first 10 Premier League games. Credit to you, Arne Schlott. Um, hopefully Liverpool continues this and makes the season even more interesting. The season is already as interesting as it is. Teams that shouldn't be at the top are at the top. Nottingham Forest, Brighton, Villa, Chelsea up there. Bournemouth in top eight as well. And bottom half, you've got Manchester United over there. Everton still struggling. Wolves, Ipswich still winless after 10 Premier League games. And Wolves, I think the statistic is that they've not won a single game in the first 10 Premier League games since 1983. Um, that's horrible, really, from their perspective again. It's like... Teams at the top of the table, they need to change. Teams at the bottom of the table need to change. But we'll see what the rest of the weekend has for us. Um, but yeah, other matches, Southampton had their, has had their first win against Everton. Again, that was like a relegation six-pointer, really. Uh, Nottingham Forest smashed West Ham 3-0. At this point, Nottingham Forest is fantastic. Uh, Leicester drew Ipswich in the last minute. Ipswich, red card for Calvin Phillips, the double yellows. Um, again, this Ipswich probably could have won that game. First win on the board for them, but... Nope, not to be. Ipswich are going to have to continue to fight. I think the relegation spots are going to be quite tight, to be honest. Like, I think it's going to be quite a relegation scrap. But otherwise, yeah, interesting at the top, interesting at the bottom. But the focus of this video was about the top three teams. Man City, Liverpool, Arsenal, the three protagonists, the three teams really that I think a lot of people would pick to fight for the title at the start of the year, start of the season. Um, and now it looks like Two clubs are facing quite a bit of a problem and one club is not. So we'll see what happens. Uh, maybe, just maybe, things might switch around later. But this is what I feel as of now. City and Arsenal, they need to do something about it. Liverpool continue on that momentum and I think they can really take it down uh, for the title. So that'll be it for this video. Uh, very interesting, as I said. And we'll see what happens uh, for the rest of the game week and for the other game weeks to come. And if there's any more... Uh, reaction to anything i'll bring it to you until then please do like share and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time until then goodbye <laughs>